Well, look, gang, it is 9.05, and uh, we're doing a live chat today, uh, along with a review, and there's a couple different reasons for this, and I, I'm just going to be hanging out here and waiting as you guys stream in. Um, the pipe in the apartment up above busted because of the, of the cold. Um, and it rained in my closet, in the bedroom closet, and just soaked the carpet and everything. Luckily, the stuff all around in the carpet. Hey, Josh, how you doing, man? Uh, we're, we're just starting out, so you just got here in time. I was just saying that there's a couple different reasons why I had to do this live today. First of all, I like doing live stuff with you guys but a pipe in the apartment above busted because of the cold and it started raining in my closet uh, in the bedroom closet and just soaked the carpet totally I had to move everything out of the closet my wife wasn't home at the time so I had to do it all myself it's amazing she's an amazing packer because um, hey Las Vegas strip hotels I like that name I'm doing good so I had to move everything by myself out of the closet and they brought in this big machine to blow it all dry and everything. Luckily there's no, supposedly no ceiling damage or something. But anyway, as you can see behind me, uh, it's, it's a wreck. Uh, this is stuff from my closet, about three fourths of my apartment. My wife had packed in that closet. So we've got stuff all over the bed. We've got stuff all over, um, all over the bedroom, all over the living room. They actually moved us into the model apartment so that we would have a place to sleep. Um, so yeah, that's my story. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. So, you know, it, it's just like, okay, what am I going to do? I, I, it, the apartment is a wreck. I can barely even walk in here. So I thought I'll just do a live thing. Um, the other thing is basically the, it goes along the same lines. I just didn't have time to put anything together. Um, from San Jose. Awesome, man. Glad to have you. So, uh, we're just going to spend about an hour from, uh, now until like maybe 10 at the latest. And, uh, I'm going to do a review. I, I have a couple things that I got from my son. If any of you are not aware of Hickory Farms, who, who knows about Hickory Farms here? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing a food review. It, 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 I'm getting to that. Um, well, you, you're watching it. This is my next video. So my son, uh, usually around the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas, Hickory Farms moves in. Yeah, you know they used to have a lot of different stores. They uh, Hickory Farms was is a company that originates out of Toledo, Ohio. It started in 1951, and what they do is they sell baskets, basically gift basket baskets of of uh, summer sausages and cheeses and mustards and sauces and candies, and it's really really wonderful stuff. Um, so. He gave me a couple different things from one of his gift baskets, and I wanted to share it with you. A couple things I've never had before. I, I love Hickory Farms, have had them all throughout the years, um, but I never have tried these couple different things. So anyway, um, got my tea here. I got tea today. I didn't get blueberry coffee. I'm kind of blueberry coffeeed out right now, which is surprising to me because I absolutely love the blueberry coffee, but we're under a very strange deep freeze right now and um, and uh, just slipping and sliding. Anybody who's driving out there is cray cray. It's just like an ice rink. It's totally insane. Okay, so I got my tea here. And what I'm going to be reviewing today, taking a look at, is a couple different Hickory Farms mustards. Now this one is a honey and pineapple mustard right there. Come on, focus. There we go. I'm on my webcam, so. Um, well, 
uh, Dark Ninja, I do have multiple, multiple second jobs besides YouTube. Um, I have a couple websites that I make money off of. Um, I do background acting. I'm, I, I've talked about that before on Grimm. Uh, I did Portlandia. I did uh, uh, Leverage when that was in production. Uh, the Librarians right now on TNT. Uh, and, and I do Fivers and multiple streams of income, which all equal one paycheck. Okay, so the other one I'm going to be reviewing is Focus Focus. There we go. Hickory Farms Sweet Hot Mustard. As you know, I love hot mustard. Um, you know, I don't like the stuff, the heat that burns my tongue. I love the stuff that burns my nose. And that's usually Asian hot mustard, horseradish, uh, wasabi, and stuff like that. I absolutely love. So let's go ahead and just dig right into this and see what it's like. I think I'll do the honey and pineapple mustard first. I've had these in the fridge, so they're a little bit cold. Oops. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Proof that I've never tried this. Or at least that I've never tried this one, but I promise you I've never tried this before. Mmm. It smells. See, now this, this, you can smell the pineapple. The sweetness of it, it, it smells like a Chinese hot mustard would, but I, I'm not expecting the heat. And this is, uh, what is this again? This is a honey pineapple. So you definitely can smell a sweetness to it. There is what it looks like. Come on, this thing has a hard time focusing sometimes. There's what it looks like. It kind of looks like Gerber baby food, doesn't it? Let's try it out. It's pretty good. Um, there's a sweetness to it. I get a lot more honey than I do pineapple. A slight hint of pineapple there, but more sweet honey flavor in a mustard. So you got a combination of a sweet mustard with the honey going on and just a, a laid back pineapple in there. But it is definitely really good. Um, par for the course for Hickory Farm stuff. Anytime you try Hickory Farm stuff, you're going to absolutely love it. Their, their summer sausage and cheeses are just to die for. So that is good. Um, and I, actually, I can't tell you what the price is because I got it as a gift. Um, Seth, hi. Uh, what made you decide to start doing food reviews for YouTube. Um, actually, I have been on YouTube. I started my first channel in 2006, you know, really with no no direction. I really didn't know what I was going to do. And I decided that uh, I finally had to, because the, the original channel of mine turned in more of, it turned into more of a history channel of my life. It was a catch-all for videos. I really had no focus or direction for the channel. And I mean, that's one thing you have to have in order to have a successful YouTube channel is you have to have direction. You have to have a focus. You have to have a niche, a genre that you're pinpointing. And I thought, you know, I like fast food type stuff. Um, I'm a foodie uh, living in Portland. Uh, there are gosh, what are there? Over 650 last I know of food carts in downtown Portland. So of course I'm a foodie. Um, love it. And I thought, well, why don't I try doing this? So I, I started doing some research and, and then I started finding other people had started doing the same sort of thing. And I thought, this is cool. There are actually people, other people in this genre that I can go ahead and hook up with and collaborate with and stuff. So that was originally the focus and it just took off. Easy Asian Gaming, how you doing, man? Glad to have you. We're, we're doing Hickory Farms today. We just did the honey and pineapple mustard Hickory Farms and that was very yummy, very tasty. And we're just about to do the Hickory Farms Sweet 
hot mustard. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this one up. Do you think you will ever have 100,000 subs? I don't know. It's hard to say. With the, um, with the algorithm change uh, recently that YouTube had, it caused a lot of people a lot of trouble. Uh, not sure exactly what the change was about, but it, it, people started nose, noticing that they were losing subscribers. Just through no fault of their own. Just started dumping subscribers. I think it was November. I lost myself. And for me, this is significant because I'm still a smaller channel. Um, I lost 158, I believe it was, subs in November. Just disappeared. And a lot of people were finding that the people that had subbed to their channels were being automatically unsubbed. And so people weren't getting uh, their subscriber feed uh, updated from the people that they were used to watching. So uh, people finally started figuring out slowly that I'm not getting this guy's video anymore. So what's going on? And they came to the channel and or whatever channels they they were subscribed to and found that they were unsubbed so I had to sub back in yeah it, it was it's horrible so people are still recovering from that people like PewDiePie uh, Shay Carl you know some of the big superstar youtubers that's a drop in the bucket for them so you know they they lose you know a thousand subscribers and more and it's just like oh well <laughs> You know, whatever. Watching from snowy New York. Hey, we're snowy here too. I was just telling everybody that uh, we're kind of in a deep freeze right now, which is another reason why I'm doing the reviews here instead of out there. I didn't want to drive in that mess, so it's pretty messy. Um, yeah, Asian, easy Asian gaming. I, I went ahead and answered that already. Um, yeah, I, I have multiple streams of income. Uh, I do background acting. I do um, have a couple websites that I do. I do Fiverr stuff. Just multiple streams of income from different places to equal one paycheck. So that's the that's the nutshell of what, what I went over. So anyway, let's go ahead and try this sweet hot mustard. It's funny, it doesn't smell as sweet as the other one, but then the other one was supposed to have honey and pineapple in it, so I'm sure that added to the sweetness. Okay, so that is what that looks like. Come on, focus. This webcam has such a hard time focusing sometimes. Well, that's the best I can get it right now. Anyway, uh, this actually looks like a Chinese hot mustard. The other stuff, like I said, looked like Gerber baby food. Um, how old are you? Clash with Matt asks how old I am. I am 52 years old, but I feel like I'm 12 in my mind. <laughs> that's, that's why I have so much fun, because I don't care. I have a blast doing what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. This is nice. This is not like the hot mustard, hot Chinese mustard that you get in the restaurants. It's a little more laid back, a little bit smoother. Um, it's not overly sweet, which is nice. Um, see, I'm trying to compare it in my mind to the stuff you get in the uh, restaurants. Um, actually, I just noticed that I have been unsubbed from your channel, yet I still get your vids in my feed for some reason. Yeah, it, it, Critical East Japan, par for the course. Everybody's dealing with it. It's really weird. Um, I thought you were 17. Oh yeah, nice. You know, if, if it was a legitimate age, if you had said, oh, I thought you were 40, then I'd say thank you. <laughs> 17. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like I'm 17. I still like the same humor, the burps and farts and all that fun stuff. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll laugh at somebody farting over a really good joke just the way i am that's why i like jack vale i love jack vale and i uh, actually met jack i actually did a prank with jack he uh was looking to do if you if you don't know um have you gained weight since you started reviewing food yes i definitely have i used to be pretty buff in uh 
my high school years used to lift weights all the time and uh, kind of stopped lifting uh, for uh, probably a good decade now and yeah I have gained weight but I'm, I'm trying to take it off and I should be able to because the YMCA is right next door and it comes with my um, my uh, rent so there's no excuse so anyway I did a uh, review well let me go ahead and rate these first let's get these out of the way okay so the Hickory Farms honey and pineapple mustard um, I would give this a, putting aside the price which I don't know um, you know that always comes into uh, oh he was buffed during the Jimmy Carter administration 76 no that's before I started lifting um, I started actually lifting in high school and I graduated in 82 so I started lifting about 80 um, so anyway I would give the honey and pineapple mustard from Hickory Farms barring whatever price it is I would give this a high I like it and the only reason I don't give it a best ever because this is really really good is because I don't know what the price is so I'm going to uh, err on the side of caution and give this a high I like it this is really good um, the Hickory Farms uh, sweet hot mustard uh, I think I'm gonna give this also actually I'll tell you what I'm gonna give this and I like it I actually like the hot Chinese hot mustard that comes in the restaurants a little bit better uh, and maybe it's because I'm more used to that than anything else um, so yeah this would get a I like it a middle of the road I like it and this the the pineapple honey and mu pineapple mustard from Hickory Farms would get a high I like it so if you have a Hickory Farms in your area and I think you may be able to order stuff like that online um, if I find you can I'll go ahead and put the link down below in the description after the video is all done but those are good anytime you get can get your hands on Hickory Farms do it it's good stuff okay so that is the reviews for today wow that was painless uh, I worked with someone who every lunch break break ate Hickory Farms summer sausage with mustard it started to get to me after a while in a good way or a bad way I mean it, it, I, that would be the ultimate snack is like Ritz crackers with uh, Hickory Farms summer sausage and some either either one of these mustards would be good I, I'm sure they have different kinds besides those two but yeah that's that's delish anyway I'm gonna keep this in my hands it's cold in here I've got that heater on I've got a little rotating little oscillating space heater because I don't like turn on the heat actually they wanted us to turn the heat on in the bedroom up to like 70 so that's been blowing I, I can't imagine what our bill is going to be like this next month to help the, the blowers dry out the carpet so that's what uh, that's what's happening there so it's it's kind of cold in here because I've got the door closed so that can stay nice and summery uh, but I got the oscillating thing in there and it's still cold um, okay let's see what else now that we've done the reviews uh, let me see <laughs> try to think of what else is going on besides the flood in my apartment they shut down all Hickory Farms around here in San Diego County that's too bad that sucks I mean if you're addicted to this stuff or even have a real strong hankering for it that would be bit that that'd be bitter I I'd want to uh, definitely be ordering it online uh, let me go ahead and see if I can find more information about it um, yeah I told you it started in Toledo Ohio in uh, 1951 oh it says by 1959 I'm reading off uh, Wikipedia the company added summer sausage and opened their first retail store outside of Toledo so they didn't have a retail store until 59 today they specialize in food gift baskets and baskets of summer sausage cheese fruit nuts and sweets its owners its owner is Mondejul Mondejul LLC headquartered 
in uh, Chicago, Illinois, and its private co-investors. Uh, it says, once composed of more than 550 shopping mall-based kiosks in the United States and Canada, the company now does multi-channel marketing, offering their products year-round at club stores, mass merchandisers, and supermarkets, as well as through catalog and on their website. There you go, so you can get their website. Um, I'm sure the address, the URL, is just hickoryfarms.com. But like I said, I'll put it down below if I can find it. It should be easy. During the holiday season, they operate shopping mall kiosks as well. So uh, the mall, uh, good morning, Zed. Uh, the mall uh, next to us, the, the shopping mall, the Vancouver Mall, used to have a Hickory Farms retail outlet. And I think that lasted like maybe a year and then they took it out. Not sure why, but then they just stuck to kiosks. So now it just shows up around the holidays so people can buy hello pj whatchamacallit <laughs> hey ryan uh what's the first thing you've tried from the dollar store um wow worst thing let me think i mean the the majority of what i've gotten from the dollar store has been mediocre to really good i think it would have to be the brand uh what was that let me go ahead and look real quick. Um, whatchamacallit, it was the, wasn't the meatballs, it was the chicken nuggets. I'm looking in my videos, uh, in my playlist. Let me go to my playlist. Uh, okay, let's go down here. Scroll, 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 scroll. Where's my eating the dollar stores playlist? Eating the deli stores, close, but no cigar. Eating the dollar stores, here we go. I wanna say brand J, but I wanna get it right. Uh, and this gives me a chance to look through to see if I can think of anything else now I didn't really care for the Jose Olay steak and cheese chimichanga that wasn't really good at all um, oh I know what it was no I'm I'm wrong it wasn't the and it was a circle a ranch that had the chicken nuggets no it was the Larry the Cable Guy Biscuits and Sausage Gravy. That was horrid. Um, it was it was it was milky. The gravy was milky at best. The sausage pieces were like this. Um, and it was just bland tasting. It wasn't seasoned at all. There was no there was no there was no thickness to the gravy. It was just horrid and very little in it too. You got a package that stands about this high and probably about that much of it was full. And and the biscuits were hard as a freaking rock, just nasty. So yeah, that was the worst thing I've ever had at the, uh, the dollar store, Dollar Tree, was Larry the Cable Guy biscuits and gravy. Disgusting. Um, okay. John asks, where are you based, sir? I am in Vancouver, Washington, just north of Portland, just over the bridge, the interstate bridge that separates Portland from Vancouver. So just over the bridge from Portland. Uh, uh, Critical Eats Japan, tell us more about the egg pizza you snagged at 7-Eleven. Um, like I said, it was a nice foundation. It had everything on it. It just needs to be seasoned up just like you'd make eggs at home uh, and you'd season those up um, as soon as I brought it home and put just a little bit of salt on it just salt alone it was better um, and so salt and pepper would be good pico de gallo would be good um, some salsa would be good maybe some Frank's Red Hot you know whatever you'd put on your eggs at home when you make them yourself that would be good on that pizza. So it's it's a real good, it's, well, I can't say it's a real good foundation. It's a good foundation for a breakfast pizza, and it's cheap. It's $5.55 for a whole pizza, um, or two two pieces for two bucks, I believe it is. 
and it's got all the making this it's got the scrambled egg it's it's got the turkey sausage the ham the bacon uh, mozzarella and uh, cheddar cheese and then it's got that gravy it's not a country gravy like I, I said in the video but it is just a, a cream gravy and it's all on a pizza crust that's made out of like a, a biscuit dough so I mean it's it's definitely a breakfast pizza it just needs to be seasoned up um, okay yeah, Circle A Ranch one. Yeah, he, 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 the the meatballs I actually liked. Um, you know, always scared to know what's actually meat and what's not. Um, but the the meat ones, uh, the meatballs were pretty good. I liked those, but the the um, chicken nuggets were not. Uh, Joseph, hello, how are you? Glad to see you here. We had just done our two reviews, so you have to look at the archive video um to to see what we see what i did i did uh hickory farms mustards a a pineapple honey or a honey pineapple mustard and a uh, chinese hot mustard and uh so watch the archive and uh, you'll be able to check those out uh, okay so let's see what have we covered um i had to change browsers i was starting to do you now more because you now is kind of cool. When you do you now, it actually simulcasts out to uh, YouTube and Tumblr at the same time, and um, which makes it real nice and convenient. And, and you don't need a lot of extra software. Like right now, I'm using XSplit Broadcaster to to broadcast out to you guys on on YouTube Live. But with you now, all you've got to do is have your webcam and your microphone. But over on Chrome, for some reason, I started getting a split screen with a black bar over here. So it was just showing half the screen. And I couldn't figure out why I was doing all the troubleshooting and trying to figure out isolating things. Couldn't figure it out. So I tried a different browser. I downloaded Firefox and it works. So I don't know. I, I emptied the cache. I emptied the cookies out of Chrome and it still won't do it. It's just a black bar down the center. I have no idea what's caused it because um, it worked originally. So now I'm using Firefox to do you now, but I decided to do it this way instead today. Just a lot less hassle because when you do you now, you, you have to be concerned with both the chat uh, people in you now and the viewers over here on YouTube. So you've got to have multiple windows open and go back and forth and it's just kind of a juggling act. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. If you guys like, uh, have ever thought about getting into live streaming, you now is a very simple solution and it markets your videos out simultaneously to YouTube, to Tumblr, if you have that. And um, I'd like to see, I, I'm still waiting for the update on uh, Instagram. Instagram is supposed to start streaming. So, you know, you just don't, you know, you're not... Uh, you're not stuck with like a 30 second video anymore. You can actually start streaming live and that has not updated yet, at least not for the Android. I don't know for the iOS, uh, but you can do it on Twitter now. It's kind of a, a hokey thing. I've told you before because it's just using Periscope because Periscope, you know, Twitter owns Periscope. And so what they've done is they've just integrated the Periscope into Twitter so it seems like you're streaming live on Twitter when you're just streaming live on Periscope and it's being simulcast on Twitter so that's the way that's working um, uh, one up to the Sun how you doing what's the best great value product from Walmart I don't know there there's not many um, I pretty much gave up on great value stuff a while ago because everything I was getting was just trash um, so any I don't know what the best is. Um, there's a lot of worsts. Um, you, you can go ahead and search for great value um, on my channel and see what I've done. And I don't think I've liked anything. Usually if I see great value, I just run the other way. Um, Critical Eats Japan. Cool info. You now sounds interesting, but as a viewer, I'm not really interested in having to sign up yet another thing, though. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's it's not a big hassle. It really isn't. I think you can sign in. If I'm not mistaken, you can sign in either with your Twitter account for your or your Facebook account. I just sign in with my Twitter account. And all it is is you hit a button. If you've got a Twitter, hit a button and sign in with your Twitter account. And what it'll do is it'll bring all that information from your bio and everything from your Twitter account into the UU Now. That's it. Um, so sign in with your Twitter, have a webcam, have a microphone, you're set. Um, Auburg Apero, I believe. Hi, Tony, listening to you at work. Hey, that's always fun, is being able to find fun stuff to do at work. You know, I, I know that. I've been at jobs before that have been so freaking boring that you got to find different stuff to do. You really do. Otherwise, you just die of boredom. Um, Ryan Guy, ever thought about doing thrift store finds? No, I really haven't. Thanks for the tip. Uh, Blackheart Coke. Hey, Tony. Hey, dude. How you doing? We already did our reviews, by the way, so you have to catch the archive. No, I don't work at Hickory Farms. <laughs> I don't work at Hickory Farms. I'm just a fan of Hickory Farms. I mean, maybe if they gave me, like, like free goodies, I, I might take a part-time job at Hickory Farms. I don't know. I don't think I would, though. I don't like dealing with the public. Anybody who's done customer service as a job, you know what a real bear that can be working with customers. Um, that just come in and are, you know, bad moods and nasty and whatever else. And yeah, I don't need the hassle. Um, D3, I am doing good. What's up with you? Oh, the guy who said he's at work. Uh, do you work for Hickory Farms or is John just ribbing you? Uh, let's see. Blackheart Coke, just curious. Ever been to Canada. No, I never have. Uh, no, actually I have. I took a um uh I took a a boat that me and my wife it was a charter cruise up through the the um I want to say the Orca Islands. I don't know, that doesn't sound right. I don't know, but yeah, we went up to um some part of Canada. Right, right on the border there. I, I can't remember the name of the city. But yeah, it, it was pretty cool. We didn't get to see a lot because we only got like an hour to wander around. And then they loaded us back on the boat. Um, okay. Um, hello, Luke. At which steering angle have you set your steering wheel at? Um, I don't set it in the game. Um, I don't, I, I, that's more of a cosmetic thing. As far as I know, it's just a matter of it, it, what he's talking about, guys, is he's talking about uh, American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator. And I, I it's just kind of like a cosmetic thing. So I don't set it at any angle. Um, I don't set my seat. I don't set my mirrors. They seem to be fine the way they are. And uh, except for the mirrors, I think everything else is kind of cosmetic. Well, the seat I can see because that way you can get more of a, a point of view, more of a, a vision of, of out, your, um, out your window. Um, Critical Eats Japan says, did I hear you say you were also a part-time actor earlier? I do background acting. Um, I've done Leverage when that was in production. I've done Grimm throughout all the seasons. They're shooting the last episode of the whole series uh, this month. And hopefully I'll get a call for that. But I've done all the seasons of Grimm. Uh, I've done uh, Portlandia. I've done The Librarians. Uh, a couple local commercials. Some print ad stuff. And I was also background in uh, Reese Witherspoon's Wild. Uh, shot up at the Bridge of the Gods. In, um, up on 80, 84, I want to say. That, that goes along the Columbia Gorge. 
Um, Chris, how are you doing? Instagram already live streams on my iPhone, old nerd. Started a few weeks ago. Okay, so they've rolled it out for the uh, iOS, I guess, but not for the Android yet because I'm still waiting for the update. The last update to Instagram told me that um, it was still coming. So they're, they're wetting our whistle for it, just hasn't haven't gotten it out yet. Um, one up to the sun. If you're old nerd reviews, how old are you? 52. Black nerd coke, some part of Canada. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's a big, it's a big place. I know, but it's just like um, I, I wish I could tell you more. I wish I could, I wish I could tell you, but I don't remember. It, it's been too long. Oh, you're from Oregon. Um, yes, original. Well, originally born in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my parents moved when I was three up to Milwaukee, Oregon. And I grew up most of my life in Milwaukee and then lived between Milwaukee, Tigard, Beaverton, Wilsonville, Tualatin. And then we moved way up for, um, for various reasons up to, um, up to Snohomish, Washington, which is like 30 miles northeast of Seattle. And then finally we came down to Vancouver and that's where we've been living for probably eight years now, I think. But I mean, you know, Portland is just over the bridge, hop, skip, and a jump. Um, I was just in the Dalles. Dalles is pretty cool. I, I like it. I like the weather there. I like the, I, I haven't been there in decades. But last I remember, Dallas was a pretty small town. I like that small town feel. Um, since I was born in Boise and a lot of my relatives on my mom's side live between Boise and a small town called Emmett, I grew up going to Emmett and staying there over the summers. And it's, it's a wonderful little town. Very little podunk, um, hick-like farmer town. It's great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Luke, I mean, in the configuration screen of the T150, you can. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that. So obviously, I haven't even fooled around with it. Uh, it's the the steering wheel is set to default um, angle, whatever it is. I don't know why you'd want to set it. I don't know why. I mean, it's not like you're in a real truck. Um, Blackheart Coke, when the people spoke, did they speak in French or did they, we didn't, we didn't speak to, to anybody. Like I said, we had about an hour just to wander around the area that they dropped us off. The, the boat dropped us off. So we just kind of looked around and, and, you know, stayed kind of close cause we didn't have much time. And then they char hauled us back on the boat and took us back. Um, uh, Chris, how you doing, Chris? Ken Domic has a few commercials he was in back in the day on his channel. Oh, cool. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. Um, one up to the sun says, do you still eat the Japanese salsa? No, I gave it to my son. It was just too hot. I, I couldn't enjoy it. So I gave it to him. He loves it. Um... Yeah, you too, Luke. You have a, a wonderful day too. Yeah, don't worry about that that steering wheel alteration in there, setting the steering wheel angle. I've never done it, and I I just do just fine. Um, the Gertie Bird. I like that name. Are you still using your OTA antenna? Are Are you talking? Oh yeah. Um, actually. I'm not using it at the moment. Um, in order to get my internet, uh, my internet with Xfinity down to a decent price, I actually had to bundle it. So now I've got TV, but the only thing I do is listen to a station called Music Choice, and I listen to some of the music stations. I never watch it. Uh, well, with the exception of sometimes I watch Antenna TV or Me TV, which are two nostalgia uh, channels that play a lot of the old stuff when I grew up. Um, but other than that, um, so I have no need of my uh, HD antenna right now.
but um, I mean, it's still the the clear antenna. I assume that's the one you're talking about. It's a great antenna. It's awesome. I mean, for plugging in and unplugging from cable and getting free TV the way we used to when we were kids, it's great. I I was even getting HD channels from the towers, and I'm about 30 miles away from all the towers. Uh, Emmett is my dad's name. <laughs> Emmett Jr. No, <laughs> oh, that's that's a great name. That's a great name, Eric. Um, I'm surprised you don't have coffee with you. Yeah, I, I was telling everybody that I had tea today. I'm kind of blueberry coffeeed out, and I didn't think that would happen. Um, but I didn't have a whole heck of a lot of time this morning. We're in a real deep freeze uh, for us. And it's real slick outside, and I really didn't even want to walk over to 7-Eleven to get my coffee because it, it, it's just like an ice rink out there. And I came very close to falling on my butt a couple times. Um, what's your favorite... Oh, Gertie Bird, you're welcome. Um, Hans Eric, what's your favorite Pop-Tarts? Um, I don't like frosted Pop-Tarts. Um, I think just as a whole, I really don't have... A favorite, I think my go-to Pop-Tart is probably strawberry. Um, I like strawberry stuff. Um, so unfrosted strawberry, I would have to say. Uh, Luke asks, what do you do for a living, by the way? Your mood for a 52-year-old man is awesome. Keep it up. Um, I have multiple streams of income. Besides doing YouTube, I have a couple websites. I do uh, background acting. I do Fiverr. Uh, just anything I can find. A lot of affiliate marketing. Um, so a lot of different streams of income. I mean, the, your, your main goal, if you want to make it online, working online, is to get passive, multiple streams of passive income. Uh, the kind of stuff where you can set it and forget it. And, and find ways to repurpose stuff. Like if you make a video or if you write an article, repurpose it in many different ways you can find. Like say you wrote a blog post, right? You have a blog and you wrote a blog post. Make a video about it. Write a white paper about it. Turn it into an ebook. Um, uh, do a podcast about it. See, you've taken one piece of of content that you've already created and you've changed it into multiple pieces of content and put it out here on Amazon to sell, which is a set it and forget get it if you write a book. Set it and forget it and just rake in the money when people purchase it. You turned it into a podcast so you can bring people back to your website or your YouTube channel or whatever. You got social media, you can put it out there and uh, many videos, whatever. Think outside the box, that's the key. Um, I can go on about that forever. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I told everybody I feel like I'm like 18. My body doesn't feel 18, but I'll tell you, my mind feels 18. Uh, what kind of tea? It's just regular Lipton. It's nothing special. Um, was zero this morning in the North Georgia mountains. Wow, that is cold. You know, it, it, cold is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. What's cold? Uh, right now, let me see. Let me look at Windows and see. Right now, uh, right now it's 33. So it's not as cold as it has been, almost. But there's snow on the ground. It's turned to ice, and it's still cold. So 33 is cold for me, but zero, oh man, that would be too much. Um, okay, what do we got? We got about 10 minutes left, and then I'm going to have to go. Uh, great philosophy. Any goals for your channel in 2017? To grow it as much as possible, and to, to um, mix it up. I love doing this live stuff. This live stuff is so much different from doing just a regular video because I'm actually being able to interact with you guys. I can't do that on a regular video. It's more of a monologue. And that's why I want to do more streaming also on my gaming channel. And I want to do streaming on both channels on Twitch also. I've done a little bit of streaming on the gaming channel on Twitch, but not as much as I usually do. 
Um, Squirrel is on right now. I usually watch him every Sunday. He does simul, uh, simulation games, and he streams every nine, and he streams for like sometimes five to eight hours doing various games. Usually Sunday is Sunday night trucking, and he's in the UK, so it is night or evening there. I think it's like five when he starts, 9 a.m. my time. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to have to catch his replay. I, I can still catch him live, but still. Uh, really chilly here, too. Seth says 15 degrees where I am in Iowa. I have been to Iowa once. I actually drove through Iowa. I was delivering a truck. No, actually, I was picking up a truck. A friend of mine at church asked me, he owns a, owns a company, asked me to pick up a truck for him. He had a Sprinter that needed to pick up pick up. Um, that he had just purchased. So he flew me out to Chicago. I drove the Sprinter from Chicago back to uh, back here to Vancouver. And I actually passed through Iowa and stopped at Iowa 80 uh, because I, you know, I love trucking type stuff. Um, and so I stopped at Iowa 80, the largest truck stop I believe it is in America. And it's, it was amazing. Very cool place. I even bought a mug. Um, uh, let's see. One up to the sun says, I bought a Sega Genesis Classic Edition, and it's pretty cool. Awesome. I was never much into the Sega Genesis stuff, more the, the NES. I'm looking forward to getting one of the mini NESs, but I'm not paying the price they want it now, I, you know, because it's so back-ordered. You know, I think Walmart, I heard, was paying, charging like 100 bucks for it. Th that ain't going to happen. Not here. That's, that's stupid. Uh, Luke, alrighty. Thanks for tuning in, dude. And catch the replay if you missed some of the, the reviews. You take care. Uh, Eric Reynolds, 49, 49 here. And loving beating the young kids on Xbox. Gamer for life. Right on, dude. I started gaming, I think, the first game that I played. The first uh, actual visual game, not text games. I used to play a lot of the text games, but I f believe the first visual game I played was the original Prince of Persia. But um, I really, really cut my teeth on Quake. Online Quake. I, I was in a couple different clans in Quake 2 and Quake 3. I was in a freeze tag clan in Quake 2 and a weapons factory arena clan in Quake 3. Or, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. Seth says, I have an original NES that still works like new. That's sweet. Sorry. So you obviously have an old TV that it can hook up to. Um, you know, the, the, the advantage of getting the new mini NES is going to be the HDMI uh, input so you can plug it in or output so you can plug it into either your your monitor for your computer or the um, the TV nice um, I made a text-based RPG and they're pretty fun yeah that's cool my my son used to program in uh, grade school um, you know when I went to grade school we didn't have that kind of stuff computers are you kidding we didn't even have that kind of stuff uh in the classrooms in high school i mean it was just starting to come out because like i said i graduated in 82 um so yeah he he programmed his own game and i think i still have it somewhere on a hard drive uh somewhere around here and it was pretty cool it was fun it was it was impressive mostly because my son did it so you know you're always proud of your kids and the stuff that they accomplish. Um, okay, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's about five till, so this is a good time to set, just say, uh, let's wrap this up. Um, Brian, yeah, I just want you to you there, but I'm sure you're there going to the game, Jim. And I have no one that I do, and I guess I'm trying to read this. Um, yeah, just hang in there. Have fun. I mean, that's that's the whole idea. Um, got Atari in 77, Coleco in 82. Yeah, I used to play the Atari 2600 all the time. I, I've got an emulator 
that I play on my computer. Um, one up to the sun. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you for joining me. So, yeah, anyway, guys, I'm going to go uh, get another cup of tea, try and stay warm, probably do some gaming, watch Squirrel online. Um, so you guys have a freaking awesome day. Thanks for joining me. And if you missed the uh, reviews of the Hickory Farms, if you came in late, go ahead and just catch the uh, archive version. It'll be up there pretty soon. I'll put a link below to, in the description to Hickory Farms. Anyway, you guys take care and thank you so, so much for being here. Join me over my social networks, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, I'll do the, the whole in, uh, outro. Um, at Old Nerd Reviews and become a part of the Old Nerd Crony community. Sorry, no fart. All right. Have a freaking awesome day, guys. I'll talk to you later.